In this video we are going to create the axle for the T9 Automo Blocks project. And let's go ahead and just take a look at this model and you're going to notice in my browser history over here, or my model browser, that I've used a Revolve and you've had previous experience with the Revolve in the 5.5 when we did that rubber sleeve. And pretty much we're creating a sketch and if you remember we revolve it around an axis. So, if you go take a look at the OneNote binder, you will notice that I've provided you with a drawing already. It has a top view and a full section which is replacing your front view. So if you forgot, a full section is when the model is being cut in half. So you see the cut plane right here with arrowheads indicating which way the viewer is looking. And the AA is referencing this label down here for the full section view. So there's an imaginary blade cutting that thing right through the middle. You would remove this and then your viewer would be looking at it in that direction. That's why the arrows are pointing up because you want the viewer to be looking at it from a front view to create this. And if you remember that slanted pattern, we call that hatch. That is where the blade hit the material. And all the dimensions and everything that you'll need will be provided in this drawing right here for you to create your sketch to revolve. So let's go ahead and go into Inventor. Let's create a new part file. Standard inch IPT. Do a save as into your T9 Automo Blocks folder and you can just call it Axle. And let's start a new sketch on the front view. And the first thing that we always do whenever we're creating a revolve is draw our center line. And I want to create that center line, the overall length of the, or I'm sorry, the overall width of the part, which is 0.88. So I'm going to draw that center line, 0.88, making sure my horizontal constraint is showing up there. I'm going to hit escape to get out of the line tool, move this dimension down out of the way. Then I'm going to left click on the line to select it and turn it into a center line by clicking this button here. And I now have my center line ready to go. So, what in the world does that sketch look like? Let's take a peek at that. Now, before I show it to you, actually, I want you to think in your mind, like, what does this thing look like if I was going to draw a the, the sketch for it to be revolved? And if you take a look, that is what the sketch looks like that we need to create. Now, what I'm going to do right off the bat is just draw a rough sketch of everything and then I'm going to come back in and dimension everything and, or constraint and dimension. So all I'm going to do is draw a rough sketch of this thing, no numbers or anything and just get a rough, uh, rough sketch in and then we'll constrain and dimension. So go ahead and follow along with me and let's draw this rough sketch together. I'm going to go line tool. I'm going to start somewhere in the middle here. Just don't snap to the midpoint. Make sure you don't see a green dot. I'm just going to go up a little bit and I'm just going to left click and I'm going to go over making sure my perpendicular is turned on and then there was a little step over here so it goes like this then it goes up and then it goes back over now when I go over I want to reference the end point of my center line down there so I'm going to left click there then I'm going to go straight up left click I'm going to go over. Now when I draw this line, I want to reference this one down here. So I'm going to snap with that right there. And then I am going to go ahead and go straight up. Go over. And then come back down. I'm going to reference the other line over there. And then for this line, this one I'm about to draw, it's angled. So don't just go down on an angle. It's kind of slopes down a little bit, but stop a little shy of that Y axis. So I'm going to go somewhere down here, maybe about there. And I'm going to go up. Now I don't want, I want to go straight. Now you got to make sure that you're going straight up. So I'm going to go a little bit past. See the parallel? You want to make sure you're seeing parallel. So I'm going to go up. Then I'm going to go over and snap to the Y axis. 
I'm going to come down to about, I don't know, right about here. And then now I'm going to go back over. Yeah, we'll say about here. I'm going to go straight down. And with this one, I want to make sure that I'm referencing this line right here. And I'm going to go back over. With this one, I want to reference this line. So right there, and then I'm going to bring it down and then close it off. Okay, so now that is closed off. One constraint that I want to make sure I do before I get started is I want to lock down this left side to this y-axis. So what constraint can I do or use to do that? It's going to be the coincident constraint, so I'm going to click on coincident. I'm going to click on this line, and then I'm going to click on my 0, 0. And now it has locked that down to the origin along that axis. And now I'm going to start doing all my width dimensions. So let's start with the overall. The overall width of the entire part from end to end is 0.88. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and go dimension from there to there and there we go that is 0.88 so that's good and then I'm gonna just start doing all my other width dimensions so this one is 0 0.05 0 0.05 then my next one it's going to be the dimension from here to here, there to there, which is going to be 0.25. And then if you look, uh, where was I? I just got that dimension from right here because it tells you the diameter of that and then it tells you the depth with that depth symbol. That's how I figured out the 0.25. And the next one is going to be right here, which is going to be 0.19. All right. And then this dimension, let's go up here. That was 0 0.07. And we're also going to have to do that again, I think, down on the bottom. Maybe we'll see here. 0 0.07. There we go. Oh, I don't have to do it down here because this one is constrained. So these two are staying equal, this and this. So it automatically did this one down here for me. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this width dimension from here to here, which should be 0.32. Good. And I got that dimension right here. That's where I got the 0.19. And... We just need to finish this up. This is also going to be 0 0.05. Um, let's just make sure. Okay, no, I'm going to hit undo on that. Control Z. The reason why it's saying that that was over constrained is because if you add all of this up, it will equal 0.88. So I don't need this last dimension because I have that overall. So that's already been constrained. It already is 0 0.05. So I believe that's all of our width dimensions that we need. Now we need to start doing uh, all the diameter dimensions. So I'm going to start with this one right here and go to here. So I'm going to dimension that from here to here. And that diameter, which is from there to there, is 0.19. And then I'm going to just work my way up. I'm going to go to this one next. So from the center line to this line. So I left click both of those. This one is, what is that one? That is 0.25. Good. And then let's do this one. And actually, hold on one second. Before we do this next one, I need to add in two height dimensions. I need to add in 
this, and I need to add in this. So I'm going to add in the 0 0.01 and the 0 0.05. So let's go dimension, click this, 0 0.01, click this, 0 0.05. All right, so I got those two. And I'm going to do the overall, I'm going to do, let's see, dimension. I'm going to go from the center line to this one. which is going to be 0.4. And then I'm going to do from this one to here, which I believe is, what is that? That's 0.3. So you're getting that from this dimension. So that is going to be 0.3. There we go. And what else am I missing here? Whoops, scoot this over, scoot that over just to make clean this up a little bit easier to see for you. I need a dimension from here to here. So I'm going to go dimension there to there. And that is going to be uh, 0.25, right? Yeah. Uh, and actually before I do that, oh no, that's right. So I'm going to just change this dimension. This should be 0.25. There we go. And then now you'll see I have a fully constrained sketch ready to go so I can finish. And I can revolve. I'm going to say OK. And the last thing we need to do is create... Let me finish this one, is to create this cutout that you see here. So the way I'm going to do that is just draw a sketch on this face with a rectangle, the correct width, and then locate it, and then I'm going to extrude it the depth that it needs to go. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is on the other side. So I want to orbit, and i got to do a sketch, 2D sketch on this face. So see the red shaded area? I'm going to click on that. Now I want to rotate. Now notice this is important. You got to make sure the view cube is facing the right way. So make sure you can read that. You might need to turn it. And then now I need to draw a rectangle. So I'm going to go rectangle and I'm going to just draw something like this. Okay. And then I'm going to hit escape. So there's some things that I want to make sure of. I want to make sure that this rectangle is centered based off of the origin. And I also want to make sure that it's uh, the midpoint is locked in with the origin as well. So to do that, I can use some vertical and horizontal constraints. So I'm going to use a vertical constraint, and I'm going to vertically lock down the midpoint of the line to the origin. So vertical constraint, then click. The, you got to find the, where are you? There it is. You got to find the green dot for the midpoint. So I'm going to left click that. And then I'm going to left click the origin. So it just locked it um, to the origin. And then now I'm going to use a horizontal constraint. And I'm going to snap the midpoint of the rectangle right there to the midpoint or the origin. So now that rectangle is locked to the origin. So the last thing I just need to do is give it a dimension. So two dimensions. So I'm going to go here. And what is the width of that cutout? 0 0.04. So that should be 0 0.04. Enter. And then I need to make sure that it inter or goes past this this outside edge of the circle. So I'm going to add in a dimension here and let's try 0.35. There we go. So again, I locked down the midpoints to the origin and then I added in two size dimensions. So now I can finish that <clears throat> and I can extrude it, but I want to use a cut don't want it to go all the way through. The depth of that cutout is 0.2. So I'm going to type in 0.2. 
and there we go. So now I can add in my materials. Again, you could pick what color you want. I've been using that sky blue dark. I'm going to update my eye properties. Physical, update, close it, save it, screen clip it with the browser right here and then you can get your points for that project or your progress points and that's it